Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our time of worship on this glorious Labor Day weekend. Uh, thank God for blessing us with such gorgeous weather. Uh, today is Communion Sunday, so if you uh, don't yet have the elements to um, share together in Communion, please uh, pause and do so now. Uh, I have a couple of announcements for you this morning. Uh, first is a huge thank you to Pastor Susie Asia Berber for um, covering uh, all pastoral duties and uh, for leading uh, a series of excellent worship services uh, while I was away these past few weeks. Uh, also, thank you to our Minister of Music, uh, Keith Ciccone, uh, for uh, his wonderful work and also to our producer uh, Glenn Holton uh, for uh, not only uh, producing our worship service but also filling in with readings and uh, even some hymn singing. Uh, so thank you Keith and Glenn and of course Susie. Uh, also want to mention um, our um, church soloist Valerie Johnson and thank her for uh, covering for one of the weeks uh, in August as well. Uh, I would like to point out that this will be our final summer service uh, using our summer bulletin and uh, beginning on the 13th, uh, Sunday the 13th, we will resume in-person worship. Uh, this is a wonderful thing, but I want to remind everyone to be extra cautious. Um, and, uh, for those of you who are um, planning to attend in person, uh, I would ask that uh, whichever direction you enter the side lawn from, uh, that you uh, will be greeted by a deacon who will give you particular instructions of how we will be honoring uh, COVID safety protocols. Um, so please um, comply with all the things that we're going to request that you do, among them being obviously to wear a mask. Uh, we will be refraining from singing, um, but we do have a treat in store. Um, we're bringing in um, one of our favorite musicians here at the church, um, Kiyoshi Hayashi, um, to play violin. So he'll be playing the, vi the vocal part on the violin for us so we um, can fill that in place of singing. Um, so there will be more instructions about attending worship that will come out in this week's weekly email blast. So please be on the lookout for that. Uh, for those of you who are um, choosing to stay home, uh, we will be live streaming the service to you. So you'll be able to watch it in real time uh, for the first time. Uh, this will be on YouTube. We'll be providing instructions um, for how to do that. Um, and uh, it, it's much easier than, than you would think. Um, and we're available to receive your phone calls if you have any questions about that. But instructions will also be coming out on email. So uh, we're, we're taking a big step. Uh, we're doing it um, carefully and faithfully and we want to keep everyone safe so um, let's be uh, mindful and prayerful as we move forward uh, so let us now turn our attention to the purpose of our gathering today and that is to give our thanks and our praise to the lord our god good people this is the day the lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it and I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. Give thanks to the Lord. Call on God's holy name. Rejoice, Rejoice in the Lord. God, God fills our hearts, hearts with joy. Give thanks to the Lord. Proclaim God's mighty works. Rejoice, Rejoice in, the in the Lord. Lord. God's, God's miracles are a wonder to behold. Give thanks to the Lord. Trust in God's salvation. Rejoice in the Lord. God shines light upon our darkness and delivers us into his glory. Rejoice! 
loving God, today we worship you with our praise and prayers of thanksgiving. Though we, your faithful disciples of First Congregational Church, are distant in space, we remain united in heart and in our service to you. May your mercy and your grace continue to shine upon us. Bless us in our ministry to serve in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Our opening hymn today is Holy, Holy, Holy. We pray for stable-minded leadership to prevail in using science-based evidence to make rational decisions in navigating a course out of this pandemic. We pray for teachers, administrators, students, and parents who are faced with uncertainty and high anxiety as plans are beginning to be made for the new academic year. We pray for the safety of all students and teachers and support staff in all levels of education. We pray for struggling families, struggling businesses and institutions, and we pray for people who are finding it especially difficult to cope with challenging realities in our times. God, we pray for your light to shine through the darkness around us. We pray that you will guide this church in discerning how we can most effectively spread your light. Give us a clear understanding of why we exist 
so we can determine what we should do and how we should proceed in the hands and the feet and in the voice of Christ in our world today. God, we are ever thankful of the abundant blessings you bestow upon us. Thank you for our salvation and our faith, our health and happiness, families and friends, and for providing all we need for this day and so much more. As we gather at your table this morning, let us be mindful of the radical welcome Jesus extends in this time. Let us who follow and serve in his name be courageous in continuing to work for equality and justice for all God's children. And now let us join together in one voice as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us to say, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For that, we pray, is our, not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made this light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed in every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Here ends today's reading. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. 
In the early 1980s, I played football for the Pope John Paul II Jaguars at a small co-ed Catholic school in Slidell, Louisiana. Since we were the first students to occupy this newly constructed school building, we had the benefit of enjoying shiny and new everything, including our sports facility and uniforms and equipment. But even with the finest equipment and the nicest uniforms, we were a struggling football squad. Our team had a handful of very good players, uh, but we only had a total of 23 players on our team, half the number that most teams we competed against would have. And some of our players hadn't even played football before. We were like the Bad News Bears, a ragtag team of guys who had been thrown together, outfitted with nice uniforms, and given a crash course in how to play high school football. And those of us who were good players had to play both offense and defense, something referred to as Ironman football. Uh, I was running back on offense and middle linebacker on defense. The Jaguars didn't win a single game our first year out, and our worst defeat was against a much larger school, which upon seeing us taking the field, seated their seniors, put in their junior varsity team, and still beat us 62-3. to Our head coach was living a nightmare. Uh, he had been recruited to our new school with an impressive winning record as a longtime uh, winning coach at a large New Orleans high school. And he didn't know what to do with us, and he was always angry. Our assistant coach took another approach. One day at practice, uh, our head coach got so infuriated that he slammed down his clipboard and walked off the field. And that's when the assistant, Coach Bernie, huddled us together and gave us a heartfelt pep talk. And I don't remember his exact words, but I do remember his general message. He first validated our effort, saying, I know you guys are trying hard, and I've seen you come a long way. And then he stated the obvious that we were a small group with very limited experience and talent. And he told us that it was highly unlikely that any of us would be recognized as being good enough to go on to play college football. So, he said, I want you to think about why you are out here practicing every day. Why do you come? And he gave us the answer. He said, you're out here to have fun. Win or lose, this really won't matter to you guys after graduation. So if you're going to put in the time, I don't want you to come out here and feel defeated. I want you to come out here and enjoy playing the game. That changed things. We didn't immediately start winning games, but with each season we did improve. The biggest change was that we stopped seeing ourselves as losers and began recognizing that we were playing against the odds and that we, all we were expected to do was have fun. The point of this story is that I was thinking about our church in the same light while I was away on sabbatical. We're a lot like the Pope John Paul Jaguars. We barely have enough players to fill all the positions, and many of us are called upon to play many roles. We are in an environment that makes it especially difficult to draw in newcomers, 
and with our growth plans and our fundraising efforts sidelined by the COVID pandemic, we can easily get a sense that we are defeated and our hopes can become deflated. So my message to you today is based upon the pep talk that Coach Bernie gave my football team so many years ago. We need to consider why we're in this game. Why are we part of this church family? Why are you part of this church? As we begin to chart a new course together, it's important to understand why we were gathered as Christian disciples. That understanding, I believe, will lead us to discern what we are called to do and then how we are going to become a relevant church in the lives of our members and our future members. If we do what we do and are who we are because of our love for God and for one another, then we simply need to continue loving and growing together in faith. If we are truly committed to being messengers of good news, the good news of eternal life through Jesus Christ, then we move forward seeking new ways to spread that news so that others may find the hope and the joy which come through living Christ-filled lives. If our purpose of worshiping together is to give glory to God, guided by the Holy Spirit, then we do so in good times and bad. And let us not be discouraged. Let's praise God for the abundant blessings and the grace that is showered upon us always. And if we are willing to be the hands and the feet and the voice of Christ in the world today, then let us be bold in standing up to injustices of our time, just as Jesus was in his. My assistant coach informed us kids why we were playing football, not to get scholarships or to go on to be famous football stars. We were simply out there to enjoy the game. Likewise, let us enjoy our Christian experience together, assured that we will all be getting the ultimate reward in the end. We believe in the power of resurrection through Jesus Christ. Our reward is in heaven. Therefore, do not worry about earthly things. In the end, all will be well. This doesn't mean that we sit back and ride it out. There's still work to do in being the church. You'll hear that term a lot this year, being the church. And living out our Christian discipleship. We have a limited number of active players on our team. And we're doing the church equivalent of Ironman football. So we proceed with a healthy sense of self-awareness and the wisdom of Scripture to guide us. Today in our reading from 2 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul says, Since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Paul goes on to say, God made his light shine in, the, in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. We who serve in Christ's name have been empowered to spread the light of Christ. So what is this light of Christ that we carry and carry in our commission to spread? What do you think? Simply put, I think the light of Christ is goodness which we spread in overcoming evil in the world. Here's a more formal definition. The light of Christ is the divine energy, power, or influence that proceeds from God through Christ and gives life and light to 
to all things. The light of Christ proceeds from God through Christ is passed on to us. This divine energy and power are granted to us to influence change for a better world. That's something to get excited about. And this could be our answer to why we are the church here at Braintree First Congregational Church to influence change for a better world by shining the light of Christ. The Apostle Paul refers to this light we carry as treasure in jars of clay and declares this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. And I think it's important to emphasize that God is central to everything we do together and that all power comes from God. Now what about this jar, jars of clay? Why would Paul liken his followers to jars of clay? And can we assume that this description applies to us as Christ followers today? Let's assume so. Paul didn't say you are copper urns or silver vessels or even wineskins made of leather. Jars of clay were the most common, most affordable objects used to hold water and just about everything else in the ancient Near East. Clay jars were fragile, and so are we. Clay jars are versatile and essential and come in a variety of sizes and shapes and colors and so do we. Clay is taken from the earth and shaped into jars with love and care to be used for a purpose. And so are we. So I ask you, what is our purpose? Why do we gather as a church? Who are we who gather at 12 Elm Street in the name of Jesus Christ? In his letter to the Corinthians, Paul also said, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. Well, fortunately, we here today are not persecuted and struck down like the members of that early church in Corinth, but we can feel hard-pressed on every side, and even a bit perplexed when it comes to figuring out how to be the church at this time. How we connect with everyone safely, how we survive financially, how we maintain this grand old church building, how do we reach people and welcome them to join us in our mission, how do we do mission today? and fundraising and worship moving forward? Well, these are all how questions. And the best answers will come after we first gain a clear understanding of why these things and everything we do matter to us who serve in Christ's name. You know, I've still got my letter jacket from playing football with the Pope John Paul Jaguars. It's a treasure. It's a token relic from an important time in my life. There are no regional or state championship patches on the sleeves, just our school logo with the football patch and years of wear and tear. The best thing about that old jacket is that it serves as a reminder of how our mixed match group of kids stuck together, persevered through the odds, 
enjoyed learning and playing the game, and above all, thanks to Coach Bernie, understood why we were there. May we, the church, arrive at that same understanding. Amen. Good people, we are invited to give with generosity, to minister in caring ways, and to extend our hands in response to Christ's call to serve. Our ministry is made possible through the gifts that we now dedicate to support the mission of this church. To sustain us. Forgive us, Holy One, and help us remember always to turn to you in times of trouble, accepting your mercy, your grace, and your love. Restore us to fullness and fill us with your hope. Amen. Good people, the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Believe the good news through God's grace and God's love. We are indeed forgiven time and again. Thanks be to God. So let us pray. 
Loving God, may your spirit come upon these elements that in receiving them we may be forgiven and filled with new life. Nourish our souls, Holy One, and inspire us to follow in the way of Jesus our Savior. Amen.
Our closing hymn is Now Thank We All Our God. Amen. Mm-hmm.